name is Britt and if you haven't subscribed yet you probably should because I normally talk about geeky things and I suppose one can say that uh, I'm pretty geeky about acting but here is another episode of Acting 101 for you and uh, so let's just jump right into it. So in this video we are going to talk about method acting. Um, now I'm not one to subscribe to any one type of acting. Method acting certainly has its place. Um, classical acting certainly has its place. A lot of acting types, acting theories have their place in the world of acting. Um, I have certainly method acted before. One specific one that I can remember is, uh, it was kind of uh, brought on by the director, was a one act play that I did a million years ago. I would love to sit down and react to that play again at some point. I do have it recorded, but it was an Irish tragedy and we had to speak in an Irish brogue and so our director had us actually method act anytime we were together. We had to speak in an, Ir an Irish brogue, we had to act like our characters just so that we could try and you know get into the swing of things. Um, I can still do an Irish brogue and I still remember a good portion of that play. <laughs> like the actual lines that I had to speak. I actually remember a lot of those lines. Um, anyway. So let's talk about method acting. What is it? When is it good to use it? And who are some famous people that have used method acting that you may not know? Method acting is the theory in acting or the, the method of acting in which you kind of are your character. <laughs> You live as your character. Um, some people will look at it from the perspective of um, you try to pull memories, your memories. So let's say somebody's family member dies and you think about a time when a family member you were close to died and it's supposed to bring up real emotions. Um, so there's a couple of different pieces to it. The people that go really far into method acting are the people who are like, I am this character now, this is me. But the majority of people that use method acting don't necessarily go that far. They will simply just try and incorporate their trauma or their happiness or their fear or something like that into real life. Uh, this is not a type of acting that I do very often anymore um, because of the fact that I have really bad mental health. So digging up old trauma specifically since I have PTSD, CPTSD to be specific, because I have that it's probably not the best decision for me to be like, okay, this character is going through something traumatic. Let's talk about some of my trauma and bring that back to the foreground. No, that leads to flashbacks, nightmares, panic attacks, leads to bad things, <laughs> leads to days of me basically being a zombie. So it's not exactly the best thing for me to use. And that's one of the big things that I always recommend to actors that I am mentoring or actors that I'm directing. When they ask me about method acting, I tell them, it all depends. <laughs> Can you handle the concept of bringing forth some of your worst trauma? Can you be okay with remembering somebody who died in your life, possibly tragically? You know, are you in a good mental state to be able to handle that and snap back out of it when it's no longer time for you to be depressed? Um, I know I can't, which is why I don't do it anymore. I used to do it all the time. I used to that used to be how I acted <laughs> for a very long time. That is how I acted. And it, it, it did its number on me. It, it, it brought a lot of anguish, but that was the first form of acting that I was taught because that's the most common one that people have all heard about is method acting. Um, you know, people are made fun of, like the concept itself is made fun of constantly. Um, <laughs> You know, with the really, you know, just artsy fartsy actors that are, you know, just like beret and dark glasses and like, I don't know, they make them look very French for some reason. <laughs> but it's made fun of a lot in popular culture because it tends to be a little bit more on that artsy fartsy side. And 
it kind of is, but yeah, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I know for me, it really dug up some bad things that I didn't want to remember. Uh, things that my brain has specifically blocked from my brain, which is why I have PTSD, um, is blocked it from my brain so that I don't remember. Like my brain has done a very good job at making sure that I don't remember some of my really terrible traumas. And some of them have come back. The memories of them have come back because I dove into the world of method acting. <laughs> so I mean, like I said, if it's something that you enjoy doing and if you're in a good mental state where you can turn on and off and stuff like that, more power to you. I went undiagnosed with PTSD for many, many, many years. Um, I was finally diagnosed at 33. Um, so uh, <laughs> you know, maybe someday down the line I'll be able to do it again because I'll be at a better mental state since PTSD is something you can actually go into recovery with but I don't know I don't know I genuinely I don't know I don't have a lot of faith in method acting I think method acting um, I think method acting certainly has its place it certainly has done wonders for some actors that have used it Jim Carrey being one of the most famous actors to have used the concept of me method acting when he played Andy Kaufman in Man on the Moon um, he genuinely became Andy Kaufman and people were actually quite scared that he was actually like having some kind of psychotic episode because he had become this person to the point that he I think even genuinely said in an interview one time that he was possessed by Andy Kaufman so there are some people who have successfully used it and done well with it I guess I don't know Jim Carrey's mental state I know some of his diagnoses because he's made that public but um, I don't know where he is in his recovery and I don't know where he was at that time in his recovery or even if it did hurt him in the long run. Actors in today's world sometimes take it even too far with their bodies to make sure that they can method act properly. Adrian Brody being a perfect example when he played the pianist and he lost a ton of weight in order to play a Holocaust survivor. And granted, like, that makes sense because you have to have, sometimes the script calls for a very specific body type, but to do that to your body is really tough on it. I'm not going to say unhealthy because I'm never going to body shame or anything like that anybody, but that's a lot on your body to lose a lot of muscle mass and a lot of um, body fat. and it can get to a point where you lose too much body fat and your body just doesn't react to it well. Um, so that's an example um, of another actor that has successfully used it with some questionable outcomes. Sylvester Stallone while filming Rocky IV actually did genuinely ask somebody to knock him out or at least try to actually knock him out. Like, this is what method acting is. <laughs> Robert De Niro, while filming Taxi Driver, actually got his taxi license and would drive people around in a New York City taxi during filming, like while he was on break from filming. As a self-study, Halle Berry, before filming Jungle Fever, went and lived in a crack den and didn't shower for two weeks because she wanted to understand that lifestyle. While filming The Crucible, Daniel Day-Lewis didn't leave the set. He actually lived there in this movie set that was a replica of an old village. And there was no running water or no electricity, none of that. He, and he lived there while filming the movie. While I don't have any real deep specifics, just because his entire career was about method acting, Marlon Brando was also well known to be a method actor. So anytime you've ever seen a Marlon Brando film, just know he did something method acting while filming that or before filming that. While filming Gia, Angelina Jolie stayed in character the entire time. She would isolate herself from the outside world while filming. Christian Bale is another weird example of weight changes while filming. He filmed Batman and then immediately lost just a ton of weight to film The Machinist and then gained it all back to film another movie. So those are some really good examples of famous people that have actually used method acting that you may not have known about in the past. So it is still successfully used in Hollywood today and it's still used successfully on stage today. Um, 
voiceover, that's such a different world. Um, I don't know anybody who uses method acting for voice because it doesn't involve your body and it doesn't involve your facial expressions, it just involves your voice. So as long as you can alter your voice, that's all that really matters. I'm sure there are people who use elements of method acting in voiceover. I certainly, again, I do not, and I do not direct people to do so. But there you go. <laughs> So a little bit of tidbit for you for method acting. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys want to see the last video I did for acting 101, you guys can click right here. And if you guys want to see all of them, you can click right here. Please click here to subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. You can also click here to subscribe to my vlogging channel where I am basically just a pet mom. It's my version of a family vlog. Uh, so hit the bell for notifications on that channel as well. And I hope to see you guys all next time. Bye.